and Graeme Crajean, uh, MHK, as well as the Home Affairs Minister. Um, police recruitment, are we up to speed uh, with recruitment? Um, during, the, during the COVID period, we, we were falling, falling a little bit behind, but uh, I understand now sort of the recruitment's uh, now picked up the speed. It was nice to be at the sort of... The, uh, the cadets had a... Um, uh, a graduation, so it was nice to be able to see sort of new officers getting out there. Why do we recruit policemen from off island? By the way, well, I think there's a, there's a mix in there, you know. So what you've got is that we we train our own up, and you know there'll be people who will be applying from the UK or further afield to come over here to to the service. Um, now, what do they call special constables? Now, is it community policing? No, special constables. Special special. What's community policing then? Well, community policing is where the police officers are now. Uh, a number of years ago, we had community police officers. So they were, they were your specific police officers that you would see round on the beat on a daily basis. So that's now um, been reintroduced. So we were hoping that this would have been brought back in earlier in the year. But you know, with COVID coming in, uh, we're now getting that back up to speed. So people will see that a certain police officers round in their, their area. So it's it's not that they're just responding to crimes. So they're actually walking around and driving around their communities. Uh, so there's still so there are still specials, are there? There are still specials. Yes. Oh, okay. Now the operational services of the Department of Home Affairs includes the Alaman Constabulary, Emergency Planning, Civil Defence, Alaman Fire and Rescue Service, Prison and Probation, and the Communications Division as well. Your uh, Communications Commission. Uh, so I've got Communications Commission and Communications Division. Oh Lord, what's <laughs> the difference? <laughs> so so the Communications. Commission is a regulator for, for telecoms and, and for like yourself here. Uh, the division is a, a very important part of the emergency services. And what they do is they take your 999 calls. So they do the call handling and, you know, uh, it's it, it's a real vital part. And there's a, a number of places that actually look at the Isle of Man because they've got police, fire and ambulance all dispatched within the same room. And um, I've been in there a couple of times and they're dealing with people who've dialed 999 and at the same time that they're coordinating across all the services to make sure that you get the p appropriate response. OK, uh, Alan just said, are all the um, uh, fire, fire stations or uh, retained fire stations around the island secure? Are there any more to be got rid of? Um there's no plans to get rid of any. Um, that uh, there's a couple that they always concern about themselves, and I, I, I went round the fire. And fire they are. <laughs> well, the, it, Kirk, Michael, and Laxey, they're always concerned about whether the department is sort of looking at rationalising and, and doing without them. And there is no plans to do away with either Laxey or. Uh, um, Kirk Michael fire stations. Okay, Graham Krajean with us. And regarding, uh, here's one in from Malcolm who just said, regarding um, your communications commission role, um, have we f got to the bottom of the Manx Telecom problems earlier this summer? Yes, they did. Um, so, so they, they came to the, the the conclusion on that. Um, but from I think it's tomorrow or Wednesday, I will no longer be the chairman of the communications <laughs> commission. Who's going to be chairman? Um, we're having an interim, so uh, so there's going to be an interim chairman, um, so that's going to be moving on uh, this week. Uh, department's also responsible for establishing and maintaining the Police Consultative Forum for the Police Advisory Group, Parole Committee as well, and informal consultative bodies like the Licensing Forum, Firearms Consultative Committee, and also um, the Department for Home Affairs, which you're in charge of, supports the activities of the Drug and Alcohol Strategy Group and the Safeguarding of um, uh, children's group and and that's something that's come to the fore as well safeguarding children attitudes have changed certainly over the past 20 odd years or so where do you see that going um well it, it's moved on a lot over the last few years um and it's it's all departments are engaged and it's everybody's responsibility to ensure that you've got safeguarding procedures in place and uh through the departments where you know we are playing an active part in that and it's it's ensuring that all our services are, are having we've got policies regarding uh, safeguarding um obviously the the one name that looms large at the back in the back of all that is not field yeah and making sure and of course there was a almost a denial there was almost a, a, a and often that's the case in that people who go through those horrendous 
uh, situations, want to forget about them, don't want to talk about them. Uh, but times have moved on. And, and you know, uh, there was a, a committee, select committee that uh, was looking into that. And I think there's still sort of recommendations coming through from that. And, you know, I, I think, you know, there's a lot to be learned from that uh, select committee. Simple one here from Steve. Take or leave this one. How about doing something about appalling driving um, regarding speeding? Well, it's 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 one of those things that sort of I think uh, people's abilities t tends to run out, doesn't it? Uh, when they're, sometimes when they're driving, um, and I think you know what we've got as a situation is that people always go and say about the locals, but you know there's a there's a lot of people sort of on the island who who have driven in other jurisdictions. Uh, Muriel's got a question in for um, uh, uh, Graham Crugine. Uh Do you think our prison or prison in general work? Uh, it works. How many people return after they've been released? How many people go back to crime after they've been released? Um, I think that's part of what we were talking earlier about. What do we do about rehabilitation? And yeah, you know, the prison service is doing uh, a lot about re rehabilitation, and and I think our, our figures are, are quite good on that. But you know, we can always do better. And you know, you continue. How do you how do you catch everybody in there and make sure that you know they don't come back in? I think it, it's very difficult for a number of them that people will say yes that, that you're going to get your repeat offenders. But, you know, we are looking at all different ways. You know, one of the things that we've got now is uh, tagging. So you're able to see where people go. Um, you can geofence it so you can make sure there's areas there that, you know, if they go into, that, that there's a, a warning that goes off that you shouldn't be in there. Where does that warning go off? So what will happen is we've got a, a uh, through the prison probation service, so they monitor that. Um, and they'll be aware of, of, you know, the system that goes on. So is that in real time, or does the person get it on a Monday oh, morning? On no, no, it's 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 sort of within a very short period. Oh, so if somebody goes outside that geofence, it will a message will pop up on a yeah. probation officer's phone, and, and so it's it's all recorded that way. Okay, uh, John in Onken, this is for Graham Crajean. Assaults on police and other emergency service workers appear to be on the increase. Does the minister think that the Lower sentencing, such as fewer custodial sentences, have an impact on this. Is there any plan to increase sentencing for attacks on emergency workers? All right. Well, now, now what we have is we've now got uh, body cameras for um, police officers. So what, when you see police officers out and about, they'll they'll have their body cameras on, and it's surprising, sort of, um, when when you're talking to officers, how it you know it gives a bit of reassurance and and also to the public that you know this has been recorded what they're doing um sentencing that that goes down for sentencing guidelines through the courts okay does ho does home affairs recommend uh, sentencing at, at any sort of level well the courts decide what the sentence is it's got nothing so to do with the department it'll just be through legislation that's yeah. laid down yeah okay uh what's the progress on the border force I've been really pleased with this because it was one of the things that coming into uh, Department of Home Affairs that I was keen to see uh, progressed. Um, we, we did notice uh, through the Chief Constable, he was saying that we'd had a large increase of interceptions of drugs. Uh, and that just goes to show sort of people were using other means rather than coming either through the, through the, uh, the planes or on the boats. And, you know, coming into the new year, hopefully, you know, the ports will have the, those border... Um, force in place and that'll be a home affairs um and department, so, you, so you'll have possibly the constabulary customs and excise immigration all together yes coming under your umbrella well come it? under an umbrella will they have the will they have their own uniforms or will, will there be a new border force uniform? well well i think one of the things that we really need to do is to show people that they are you know isle of man border force you know, one of the things I would like to see is that they actually do have that identification on them that and it, and it works as a deterrent as well uh, more questions in for uh, uh, Graham Krajine as well. Um, uh, the role of the justice ministers, uh, what's going to happen? Um, is this is rubber stamped in Timbald? Is it this week, the justice minister? Um, no, what, what's happened is it's just just the, the title of minister with responsibility for justice. So this is a uh, we're looking at a new role. So so one of the issues was that uh, you you know, dealt with criminals. So some of this is who's going to be seeing how you deal with uh, civil justice. And it's somebody, a direct person with responsibility to report possibly to Timbledon. Uh This is a touchy one. Um, so we'll be interested to hear 
How does the Home Affairs Department deal with corruption in the constabulary? Well, the thing is, you know, if, if somebody believes there's corruption going on in the constabulary, if it gets reported, uh, so there is a process that they will go through. And as we've seen in the past, you know, external bodies have been brought in to investigate this. And one of the things that we've got coming forward next year is uh, Her Majesty's Inspectorate of Constabulary and Fire Service will be coming over and doing a review both of the constabulary and the fire service. How do you view um, corruption within the, the um, constabulary or police or prison service? Well, I think one of the things is it's it's very disappointing is in, in those enforcement office, uh, positions that you've got people who do break the law and, you know, it it does bring sort of the profession into that, that sort of thing where you, you're maybe losing some lack of trust. It doesn't make your job any easier as well if you're trying to enforce justice and, and, and uh, people to be law-abiding. If that happens, and and it and it doesn't, and you know, so as much as you put uh, th uh, things in place, you know, it's it's individuals. Graham Krajine with us today. Crikey, loads and loads of um, uh, uh, questions in. Uh, oh, Muriel got back and just said, "Do you think prison works?" Simple question. I, th I think I think it does for 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 some because they realise that. Um, you know what they've done has has put them down that path, but I think that rehabilitation is is vital to it. And uh, you know, I I could ask that. Do you think that you know because we've put people in prison because of breach of COVID, you know that's sent out a strong message, and you know people in other jurisdictions yeah. think they wish they had those sort of powers because. You know, maybe they'd be in a different position now. Do you think prison's there to punish or to rehabilitate? It, it's there to rehabilitate, you know, it, and it takes away your liberties. So it's it's a mix. Right, back with Graham Krajine in just a few moments' time. If you have a question, text, email, or you can give us a call. I'm the 12